Okay, now let us talk about uh, binary trees. This is a special kind of tree. As the name suggests, binary, that means two. So here something uh, two is used to define its meaning. Now binary tree is very important concept and that is actually used to, to define many other concept of trees like binary search trees again a binary tree. Then we talk about the heap is again a binary tree. When we talk about the red black trees again a binary trees. So binary trees are very important and frequently used uh, in in, in uh, other concept of data structures as well. So as you know that binary tree is a tree and tree is defined as a collection of element we are calling it as a node. Now what is special about binary tree we will see here. So the topmost element is called the root node. Yes this is always true. Whenever you talk about the tree the topmost element the node which is at the top is set to be a root node. Each node has 0, 1 and at most 2 child. So binary tree means a tree which can have at most two child. This is the actual definition or the meaning of binary trees. Binary means two. So any tree which allows to have maximum two child is said to be a binary tree. Now when I say maximum, that means it is the maximum value. A node can have no child. A node can have one child. A node can have two child all are the cases of binary trees for example if i make like this this node has one child then this is a case of binary tree this node has two child it's a case of binary tree this node has no child it's a case of binary tree but if i make something like this this is not a binary tree because this node is having a three child which is not allowed so each node can have maximum two child a node that has zero child is called a leaf so and this is for sure that uh, any node which does not have a child we are calling it as a leaf node also we call it as a terminal node because after that node there is no extension because that node does not uh, possess any child every node contains a data element a left pointer which points to the left child and the right pointer which points to the right child so when we talk about the implementation about of the binary tree so here every node is consisting of three fields is actually contains of three parts you can say so you can say that uh, this is a kind of node you can roughly represent here we have uh, one part is for storing the value one part is actually storing the left tree and one part is storing to link of the right tree so if you want to implement or represent a binary tree you need to represent a node which consists of three parts so here you can see that this is a root node uh, which uh, which contains some value let's say one and then it has uh, one left one uh, one left link and one right link so uh, as a whole this node consists of three parts or you can say three fields so the root is at the level zero then the the very first uh, hierarchy the very first level is uh, is actually is a level one and then we have level two and then level three this is how we are going to uh, make the trees so here you can see that every node now when i say binary tree then this property of maximum two child does not only applicable for the root node but it is applicable for all the nodes so you can see that all the nodes can have maximum two child this node is having only one child this is having no child this is having two child and there is no any node which contains more than two nodes um, which contains more than two child so this is a binary tree Now we have a concept called complete binary tree. Let us understand what is a complete binary tree. Complete binary tree is a binary tree which satisfies the two properties. Okay, so any tree which satisfy the two given properties are said to be a complete. Now what is this? Every label except possibly the last is completely filled. So whenever you are going to adding a node in this kind of tree, you need to first fill all the labels that is existing prior what does it mean it means when you are labeling moving to label 2 you need to complete label 1 if you move to label 3 you need to complete label 2 what does it mean if i want to insert three nodes i am not going to insert like this this is not allowed but i need to first complete my label 1 and then i can go to label 2 now if i want to add extra nodes i will be adding here if I want to extra nodes, I cannot be adding here, but I need to add it here. 
so this is the property that you are uh, if you are following this then this is the first property that is being fulfilled that when you add the nodes to a tree it should be uh, filled label wise second all nodes appear as far left as possible so again when we are inserting a node the node are to be inserted from left to right what does that mean it means if i am going to make my tree so this is my first node second node third node and then i am going to add the fourth node i am not going to add like this this is not the correct way instead i i should have used this way and then if i am going to again add a new node i cannot insert it here but i will first fill my left parent this is my left parent so i need to fill first if i am doing like this this is not correct i need to do like this now if i am doing like this that means i am fulfilling my first property that all my labels have been completed there is no node possible in this label now i need to move to the next label now i am adding a node and then if i want to add another node i need to keep it as left as far possible that means i cannot uh, add it here but i need to add it here so this is the uh, left part of this so first you have to fill the left uh, uh, nodes and then you have to move to the right so if you fulfill uh, both these two properties then it is said to be a complete binary tree so now let us talk how to represent binary trees in a computer memory we have two uh, popular methods for representing one is a linked list method and the other is arrays so we'll see one by one that how these method can be used <clears throat> the very first method we are discussing is linked list representation of binary trees this is how we can represent these trees in the memory now i am assuming that you are already very much familiar with the linked list you are comfortable uh, with the linked list operation like inserting a node at the beginning at the last and also you are familiar how to delete the nodes in the linked list now keeping this in mind i will just uh, take a quick uh, discussion that how the linked list can be used to implement the to implement binary trees so we know that the linked list is consisting of nodes so we need to define our node so here when we say tree so tree is something like this is a structure let's say this here is we are keeping this key value 1 then 2 and then 3 so this is something we are actually representing in this way where this is a node which contains one value and then there is a link field which contains the address of other node and there is also a link field which contains the address of the other node so here we will have value 3 here we have value 2 and since these nodes are the child nodes these are the leaves actually for this tree so they don't have any child so here we don't have any link so the point to note here is when we are making a linked list representation of such a tree here the node consists of three parts we have three fields two fields are for keeping the address of the child nodes and one field is for holding the actual value so here you can see that this is how we can define the node here we have one pointer that that actually refers to the left link and then we have also have a right link and we have one field for keeping the data also we will take some note that we need to keep in mind uh, when we worked with a linked list for implementation of binary trees here we will take one pointer root like when we take uh, when we talk about the linked list in the linked list we have a special pointer we are calling as the first or a front or the head now this pointer is a special pointer which will always point to the first node here we will we will give a name to such a pointer as a root so instead of calling first head and front we are calling it as a root and the purpose of this pointer is the same thing that it will points to the very first node of your linked list and this is basically pointing to the root so if this is uh the scenario that we are having so here we have one pointer of type node which will take address of the root node and if the root is null that means there is no node existing in the tree and the tree is empty so we can call it as a null tree or a empty tree so here you can see this is how we can represent graphically the linked list status so this is the tree which actually refers to this structure 
we have at the root we have one then we have two we have three then we have uh, four five six seven here we have only one child and that is the left child so this is eight we don't have any uh, no we have a right child as well so we have nine here and then for five we don't have any child for six we have two childs name with 10 and 11 are the values kept in this and for this note we don't have any left child but we have a right child with the key value 12 so this uh, graph or this tree we can represent using this linked list representation then the other representation of binary tree is done by arrays so array we know it's a linear collection of element it's a uh, it's a sequential arrangement of element already we have discussed uh, arrays in implementation of many other data structures so here we can see that how the array can be used to implement binary trees so here we have a very interesting relationship is actually seen here when we talk about implementing a binary tree we'll see we'll go one by one but one thing to understand when it comes to the efficient that which method is more efficient so you need to keep in mind some drawbacks of array and that drawbacks is also applicable here the drawback is when we use array for implementing any of the data structures you need to know the the memory allocation in advance means you cannot do dynamic allocation with a linked list whenever you need to uh, whenever you need to store a data you will create a memory space and add that space to your existing linked list but in the case of array this is not feasible you must be knowing in prior that what is your actual requirement so this is one one drawback of the array uh, for using as a implementation of binary trees you must be aware about the, the the size of your array and that's why in many of the real time applications where we are not aware about the about the real size of our application in that case we cannot use this arrays now so we are using one dimensional array we are calling it as a tree uh, which can store the values of the tree the root of the tree will be stored in the first location that is tree one so when we when we uh, take array for implementing it so you may find in uh, many places that we are representing it as a one but actually when we are implementing using array in a programming language so the index starts with zero so the root will be existing at tree zero not at tree one so this is the very first uh, index of any array and the first index refers to the position of the root node so tree zero index is actually the reference for a root node so for uh, um, if you if you uh, take it as a first position if you uh, so in general when we say that the first element will be the root so we are calling it as a one but actually uh, in the real implementation this one should be replaced with zero because your first position is not the first pos uh, not the one position but the zero position so the first location uh, we are calling it as a tree one but when it comes to implementation it will be actually tree zero so keep in mind the the children of node stored in location k will be stored in location 2k and 2k plus 1. So if you are assuming that the first location is noted by the first index, in that case your left child will be find out by 2k where k is the index and right child can be find out with 2k plus 1. Now keep in mind that your first index is zero then only this formula will work but when it comes to actual implementation so using any programming language so when we talk about the arrays in java uh, java language or c++ or c the index starts zero so in that case so the first index is one but when you consider the first index as zero then your left child will be find out with the formula 2k plus 1 and the right child can be find out with 2k plus 2 so keep this thing in mind so you may come across many different questions asked in the quiz at many places where you can uh, see 
that many times this formula is used but keep in mind this formula is only meaningful when index is given as as, the, as one as the first index otherwise by default you have to assume that index starts at zero so if nothing is given to you you have to go with this scenario if if the uh, if the condition is given to you then you go with this this scenario in this case your uh, your parent can be find out by by k by 2 floor minus 1 this is the formula used for parent and here you can use the parent can you find out by k by 2 okay so any empty tree or subtree is specified using null if so empty tree can be find out if your uh, if your index if your uh, tree is assigned value minus 1 so that means that this is actually uh, not having any any node at that point and it is actually empty so either you can call it as a, a tree 0 equals to minus 1 or you can say tree 0 equals to null both refers to the empty tree okay now let us check that how this formula can help us now one thing to keep in mind that this will work only for a complete tree so we know that what is a complete tree complete tree says that uh, whenever we are inserting a node it must be insert at all the prior labels that means if you want to insert a node at third label then label 2 must be completely filled the second condition for the complete binary tree is whenever you are inserting a node the node must be inserted from left to right so if we, if we follow these two conditions or if you make your complete tree then only these formulas have a meaning and it can allow us to access these uh, left child right child and the parent so here i am uh, considering the case when 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 this is when this index starts with one now keep in mind whenever you use this formula just keep in mind that your index starts with one or zero so by default when we go with the array implementation using any programming language this is given as zero but in in, in many problems when any question is asked to you you need to uh, take a care that what index is given to you so here let us say it starts with one that means two three four five six seven and because this must be a complete tree so we don't have this left child and right child also we don't have but we need to take the index for this eight nine this is ten eleven and then we don't have a left child this is index twelve then right child thirteen this must be fourteen and this must be fifteen sorry this must be fifteen so this is how we we get the indexes and now you can see this is our array and you can see that these are the values are arranged so 1 is 20 3 is 35 7 is 39 now if i want to know who is the right child of index 3 I mean this node so this node is index 3 so the right child you can find out with this formula when k equals to 3 the right child can be find out 2 into 3 plus 1 which is seventh index so the right child for this is this one 39 and you can see this that the right child for this is this similarly if i want to know who is the left child of this 21 node means this a uh, node with index 6 so i can find out the left child by using the formula when k equals to 6 so 2 into 6 that is 12 so i go to 12th and we don't have any left child existing so this is how we can find out the ref, left and right child of any node and also we can find out the parent if i want to know who is the parent of this node so this node means index number 10 so I will use this formula 10 by 2 the floor value that is 5 so uh, for the 10th index the child the parent is 5 so this is the parent so you can see here that for uh, this 10th uh, index the parent is this one so this is how we can uh, we can uh, represent our tree using an array already we have seen that these formulas are working but now let us take a scenario when we are implementing using an actual array and implementing in a uh, using any programming language so in that case our index start with zero not with one so in that case we have to make some changes in the formula so here index starts with zero so zero one two three four five six 
then this is 7 which is not existing, 8 not existing, then we have 9, 10, we have this 11 not existing, 12 not existing, then we have 13, and uh, something is missing here because we have 15, so let, let us check again, yes, 14, yes, nothing is missing because we have started with index 0. So here we can write a new index. Now this is no more we are we are talking off because now our index starts with 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And now we will also make some changes in the formula. So now our new formula is 2k plus 1 or we can write like this. 2k plus 1 is the new formula to find the left child and the right child can you find out with 2k plus 2 and the parent can you find out by floor k by 2 minus uh, 1 okay so let us see that how the things will work So let us find out the right child of this node, the right child of index 1. So if k equals to 1, then the right child can be find out by 2 into 1 plus 2, that is fourth index. So for this node, this will be the right child. You can see here for 1, this fourth index is the right child. Okay, now let us find out what is the left child of this node. Now this index is 6. So left child means here we have a k equals to 6 so we can see 2 into 6 plus 1 which is 13 so you have to go through the so left child for this node you can see 13th index this is your left child and you can also see from here this is your left child now if you want to find out the parent of any node so we can use this formula let's say I want to find out what is the parent of this node now parent we need to find out the parent of index 4 so we will use this formula so 4 by 2 floor minus 1 so 4 by 2 is 2 minus 1 that is 1 so index 1 is the parent of this node similarly if I want to know who is the parent for this node okay index 9 so I will use this formula 9 by 2 floor value minus 1 so floor value means this will give you 5 uh, minus 1 that is 4 so the parent for this node is index 4 so just keep in mind uh, these are some differences when you uh, assume your index start with 0 or 1 and this is how we can implement a binary tree using an array and next we have an expression tree uh, binary tree can also be used to uh, to represent uh, expression tree we'll see that how the expressions can be represented using a binary tree so this is a very simple example to make you understand so we have expression given to us a minus b plus c into d so we will first write a minus b so a minus b now keep in mind that your uh, operands will always occur at the leaf and the operators will be acting as an internal nodes so we will write a minus b here and then also we have c into d so you will write c multiplied and d and this is connected by by the multiple operator and then we have uh, th these two terms are connected with the plus operator so you will be connecting this. so this is how we can represent any expression using a binary tree Likewise, if the expression is uh, bigger, you can simply, you know, segregate all these uh, independent terms and then add these terms with an operator. So we have seen that how the binary tree can be used. Now we have one more example uh, to understand that how these expressions are represented using a binary tree. So you can see here, we have, we have the very first is a plus b. So we can write a plus b like this. And then we have C into D. This already we have seen. And then these two are connected with minus sign. So I have just added the two with minus sign. And this is 
you can say one component you can say this is uh, one expression in itself okay and then we have uh, something this uh, f power g so we have use this f and this power operator and g and then we have h minus i and then we have this operator that connects these two components and then we have this and component this component and then we are doing this operation of modulus so uh, this is something which represent this part and some this is something represented by this part and then you are doing this modulus on these components so here this is how we can represent the entire expression using a binary tree so this is all uh, we'll see more about binary trees in in the in the coming lectures so that's all for so that is all thank you very much